I'm Chip Rowan with your Armstrong Neighborhood Channel, and you are watching In the Know. For this episode, we are here with Paul Lipke. Hello, Paul. Good morning, Chip. Good to have you here. Good to be here. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. And Paul is with the Connorsville Shade Tree Commission, and uh, Paul's going to start out by telling us what the Shade Tree Commission is. I've heard of this. I know you have something to do with trees. Do you want to talk about what the commission yeah, does yeah. for the city? Sure. Uh, the Shade Tree Commission is an advisory board to the city. Um, we don't have any kind of governing authority. Uh, and so essentially what we do is uh, interject ourselves into situations where the city's owned trees are involved and offer guidance in how to care for, how to maintain, maybe, maybe there's an issue about removal. Uh, we get called to make decisions on things like that. And in, in the case of uh, this recent grant that we're going to talk about, mm -hmm. uh, we played a fairly major role in, in developing the, the grant application. You talk about city-owned trees. It's on city property, so it would be city parks along like the downtown area, even along Pittsburgh Street here, I would imagine. In, any of the city streets that have a tree within the right-of-way, okay. that's considered a city tree. Yeah. And then the parks, as you mentioned, yeah. And I would imagine like as sidewalk projects are done, so you're making decisions whether to remove trees or keep trees or what to replace them with. Those are some of those decisions. Yeah, they, they are. And, and I think people need to understand that, uh, well, trees were planted in the city decades ago. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who or how that was done. In more recent years, there have been some downtown projects where trees were planted. Mm -hmm. um, the Shade Tree Commission was not involved in that. Actually, we were not active then. Uh, and, and also, at that point in time, the knowledge that we have now about how to deal with city trees wasn't available. Okay. So people, some people are pretty critical of, of what was done in the past because we're having problems with them now. Right. Uh, none of that was uh, done on purpose, of course. And it was done with best intentions and with, with a little bit of knowledge that people had at that time. Yeah. So forestry is not new to you. So you actually no. have a career. Now, you want to talk about what you did as a career, as a, a service forester? Sure. Um, I worked for the state of Pennsylvania. I had worked a little bit with the federal government before that, Forest Service. Um, in Pennsylvania, the forestry staff primarily has three points of focus. Um, one is we worked on the management of the state forest land itself. Pennsylvania has about two million acres of state forest wow. land. Wow, did not know that. And we have, we have staff all across the state to deal with that. And, and we're managing those forests for timber production, for recreation, for uh, water conservation, for wildlife habitat, a number of things. Uh, another focus is the uh, what we call the community forestry, and, uh, and that's where a forester makes him or herself available to a community to offer support, guidance on how to improve the uh, community forest. Mm -hmm. And then the, the third main focus is uh, forest fire protection and suppression. Okay. And, uh, Everybody in the state gets involved in that at certain times of the year. Yeah. So I, I did all three of those. Yeah. Well, I grew up in Mill Run, and I'm familiar with forest fires, especially out in the, like around the railroad, oh, like yeah. the high power. This can get pr pretty bad. So I realize how, how important all your work is, especially that area there. Yeah. Well, it used to be terrible with the railroads. They yeah. Railroads have come a long way in yeah. working to suppress and prevent fires. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we still have railroad fires. Yeah, I'm sure that happens. Well, so you have like over 30 years, I think, with the state, you said? I worked for the state for 33 years. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then prior to that, I worked for the U.S. Forest Service. And, uh, and then after I left the state service, I worked for myself for okay. a while. Yeah. And now you're volunteering with the city. I am. Yeah. And that's and nice. Appreciate your helping. Well, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but you could use some other helpers, too. And we'll talk more about that yeah. as we go yeah. along. Good. So you, you, you uh, mentioned that the city recently received a grant, and it was a large grant. Do you want to talk a little bit about that grant and, and how that process maybe even went? Yeah. Uh, the, um, the federal government had has a program. Well, I'm going to explain this this way. 
We, we have the federal government in that we have uh, a lot of departments. One is the Department of Agriculture. Okay. And in that, a sub-department is the federal U.S. Forest Service. So the federal funds are going to channel down through there. And in the Forest Service, they have a community, what they call it, urban and community forestry program. Okay. And so those funds are going to come down to that level, and they are then made available to any community in the United States. They have to meet certain criteria, and we, we do meet that here in Connellsville. We applied for, we thought we were going over the top. We asked for a half a million dollars. That's $500,000. Yes. And, and we got it. And we were kind of surprised. But then we started seeing what some other larger communities got uh, in the millions of dollars. And, uh, and, and so we, we feel like we were, we were justified in asking for what we got. Yeah. Now we have to spend it. We have five years to spend it. We have a plan. That's $100,000 uh, a year. Well, it, it is. <laughs> and, and once it starts going, it's going to go pretty fast. Yeah. But, uh, we we can, can do great work for the future, though, too. So you can do some things now that will help benefit down that, the road. That's the whole purpose for, for, for yeah. our plan, yes, is to put, put things in a better uh, situation now with our community trees, add to that with more trees, uh, educate the public. That's going to be a key part of this. Mm -hmm. And then funds are going to support that. And, uh, and then we're hoping to uh, get community involvement yeah. as part of it. Let's talk about that involvement. So you have these funds. You want to use these funds. But you need people to help with that, that project. you want to talk a little bit about where you need people to help and, and how they can help? OK. First, uh, a good bit of that money is going to be spent on, by uh, hiring contractors to do certain things. One of those things eventually and it won't be the first thing but we're going to plant more trees in town okay uh so we're starting off with small trees small trees need some care okay. until they can support themselves such as watering even when they're small i would imagine if uh, particularly the year of planting mm -hmm. yeah or if we get a drought year um at some point they're going to need some pruning and uh and i hope we talk about that because uh, pruning is crucial um, correct pruning. Correct, correct <laughs> pruning. Yes, and uh, and then there there's some other things like mulching. Some areas may need to be mulched periodically. Um, those are those are primary things that uh, the uh, community could help us with. So say I guess someone could have like these trees in front of their home, and they may decide that they could could help with those. That would be an easy way if, yeah. if they lived on a street where these new trees were planted, that would and be they great. could kind of adopt that and, and take take over those. So, but you, uh, you want to help people to know the correct way to do this. So let's talk about that. So you're not only just talking about this, but you're going to provide opportunity for people to actually be trained. And so yeah, we are, and uh, the reason is that scientific knowledge takes a long time sometimes to get into the community. Uh, you know, as, as scientists, you know, we, we learn about this, we put it into practice, but the average person doesn't. Right. And there are probably more, far more examples of trees that are improperly pruned mm -hmm. and thereby damaged. Uh, and we would like to be able to show people how it's done correctly, particularly on young trees. It's crucial on a young tree. Right. And, and then with the young tree, that's something that a citizen can get involved in. Right. We're not talking about great big trees where right. you have to hire somebody to come in and do the work. Because right. um, it would be so. basically the new, the tr new trees that would be planted and maintaining them. Exactly right. So you're going to have Penn State's helping you with this uh, Penn State extension. Is that what it is? Yes. Yeah. And they're going to have a, a class at, at, at the city is going to be offering this. You want to talk about is there, is there a, a date for that class, Paul? Yeah. Yeah, there is. Um, May 18th. It's a Saturday. Now, you mentioned Penn State extension and they are heavily involved in this effort and they're doing it statewide. And in, in Western Pennsylvania, they're working in conjunction with the Western Pennsylvania Conservancy. Okay, which owns and, Falling Water. Right. Does some nice flowers out here on the, uh, yes. the, the memorial area. Yes, and, and they have a headquarters in Pittsburgh. Okay. So it, it works nicely with the Extension Office and, and the Conservancy. They are going to put on a class, a training class for us. 
and and they're going to cover a number of subjects, not just how to prune a tree, but and I haven't seen the agenda, but I think they're going to probably start off with how a tree grows, the physiology of a tree, um, the benefits of a tree, uh, how to properly plant a tree and then care for it afterwards, and that's when the pruning will come in. All this information, and, and we, we tend to think that we know these things intuitively, but it's surprising how much we don't know and how many misconceptions that we have. Yeah. So I think this tra tree uh, training is going to be very beneficial. Yeah. So it's May 18th. It's a Saturday. It's, it's, <clears throat> it's, you're not sure of the location yet because you're not sure how many are coming. I think, well, we it? are. We have it nailed down now. Okay. We're gonna, the training is going to be on that Saturday uh, at the City Hall Okay. in the Chambers Room. That, what, what time is that going to be? It's going to start at 9. It's going to end at 4. They're going to provide a breakfast snack. They're going to provide lunch. And if somebody can only make it a part of it, well, that's okay. okay. But uh, we, we like the more people can go through the whole course, the better it's going to be. Yeah. This is open to everyone. You don't, yes. you don't have to be a city resident to be involved. And it could be from anywhere. Anyone that's watching yes. is welcome to come. Uh, but how do you register? Uh, ah, good point. Yeah. Um, if somebody's interested, they should contact Shelly Primus, who's the uh, secretary at City Hall. Okay. Shelly's phone number is 724-628-2020. Uh, okay. She has an email address, and I can't remember it. Yeah, well, Dave will be able to put that up on the screen for us, so that'll be okay. something they'll be able to see, right. so they, they can capture that off of there. So they call, is there a deadline for registration? So the, the actual training is the 18th of May. They should probably call at least a few days in advance to kind well, of give it. Well, we like there's to, lunch and things that need to be planned. Right. We need to know a week ahead of time. So okay, a week ahead of time. Yeah. Okay. That's good to know. <clears throat> um, so after the folks have this training, what, what would be expected of them? Well, we're not demanding anything. Okay. Um, we're hoping for a couple of things. One is we hope that people will take this information, use it in their own backyard if they want to, um, an interesting side note is a lot of people hire somebody to prune their trees. Yeah. That's common. And if, with this knowledge, they're going to have a better idea of how a tree should be pruned, right. even their own tree. And they may want to look for contractors that understand and, and use these methods. Um, Just because you have a chainsaw doesn't mean you're capable, right? Well, that's right. <laughs> well, that's all oh, I could tell you stories about that. Um, and then another thing we're hopeful for is that some of these people will volunteer to help the city, especially in the early stages of these trees, the growth of these trees that we want to plant. Yeah. Because the city employs the public works department. Uh, they're right now, they're kind of overwhelmed with all the things they have to do anyway. Right. And so we can't throw too much burden on them. And the few people that have had this training are not going to be around forever anyway. Right. And, and so the more people that learn how to do this and are willing to volunteer, the better off the, uh, the whole city force is going to be. It's an opportunity to take some pride in your community and help your community. and, and, and it help. Sure is. I, I, that term urban forest is kind of new to me. Uh, I, so I was reading over that. That wasn't something I was familiar with. But it, it is kind of an urban forest, especially when you get down around like East Park, where yeah. there's a lot of trees. Or South Side. South Side, yes. A lot of trees, yeah. yeah. And the urban forest is, is, well, it's a relatively new term. When I say new, maybe in the last 30 years uh -huh. or so. Uh, That's new for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, was, it was new for me. Yeah. And, and the things that I have learned in, when I was still working with the state, uh, were, they were really mind-blowing. I mean, they expanded my knowledge tremendously. Yeah. In addition to that May 18th event, uh, there's some online options, too. I think there were fees for that, I believe, if someone wanted to do some... Uh, Penn State Extension offers this program as a webinar, okay. and I don't know how often, uh, and it's a multi-day, so it's probably not, you're not sitting there for five hours, Right. Um, and they do charge a fee for it, and there are materials that yeah. go along with that. Our materials are going to be given to us for free. Yeah. So this whole training on the 18th is free. Yes. Yeah, so it would be a great thing to take advantage, you know, if you have trees in your yard and, and you need help with those or interested in helping with this uh, it'd be great to come out and take advantage of this. Before we started recording, we were talking about 
uh, how the city could kind of be broken up. And if you had a lot of people sign up, you could kind of like do zones. But you said maybe you would just focus on an area and those people that were trained would just say, hey, we're going to work this week in this area. Want we'll to talk a little bit about how that could happen? Well, and, and since you said something earlier here about uh, adopting a tree, that, uh -huh. I think that's another good idea. If, if somebody chose to adopt a particular street, for example, or a section in a park or something like that, we would be glad to have them do that. Um, we don't know how this is going to pan out yet. We don't know how many people are going to, to uh, actually want to volunteer. So it's kind of up in here as to, <coughs> excuse me, as to how we're going to handle this. Mm -hmm. Um, but if, uh, if nothing else, when the time comes to do some work, we're going to ask these volunteers and I may say to them, how about joining me on this street or this day or in this park right. or this day, put in two hours, get a lot of work done in two hours. With, with a group of people. Yeah. Yeah. And they, even, they know what they're doing. <laughs> even, you know, a couple, just two of us on uh, the cleanup day the other weekend. Uh huh. Uh, we got a tremendous amount of work done. Yeah. Two people in three hours, yeah. two truckloads of stuff to haul away. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot. We now, you're also done. looking for people to serve on the Shade Tree Commission. <clears throat> now, these people would need to be city residents from the city of Connorsville. Should be, yes. Yeah, yeah, but they could help, as you talked earlier, with this commission that kind of advises the city on, on what to do with trees. If someone wants to, to sign up for that, how often do you meet and like what's what's the expectation for that? Well, right now we meet very irregularly. <laughs> um, we're going to try to pin that down and get a, <clears throat> and a schedule going. But uh, you mentioned somebody does should be a city resident. Uh, they don't have to have necessary knowledge of forestry or tree care. They're going to pick that up mm -hmm. as part of it. But people who are willing to look at a situation uh, examine all the components and make a decision, pass it on to the city fathers yeah. as, as a recommendation. Yeah, we need people like that. Yeah. We have three on the commission now. We have room for two. I think that's correct. Um, I, that's about all I can say about it. Yeah, and if someone was interested, they could call Shelley at the at yes. city hall too and just yeah. say, hey, I saw Ch Paul and Chip talking and like to help out on the tree commission. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been on the commission? Oh gosh, uh, since since the 80s, 1980s. Okay, that's I a long time. I you saw some of these trees grow up. Some of them, yeah. <laughs> and get cut down, well, <laughs> grow up and be cut down. The, 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 we have trees that are a lot older than I am. Yeah, I'm sure. Town. And yeah. that's part of the problem that we have to address. Yeah. Because those trees aren't going to last forever, and some of them are deteriorating now. Yeah. So that's another key component in this plan. Yeah. Paul, anything else you want to hit on that we haven't covered? that you think would be important for folks to know about trees in Connorsville? No. Okay. I think I think we covered it pretty well. Okay. So if you don't mind, just give the date for the training and how people can sign up for the training, if you could give that information one more time. Okay. Uh, May the 18th, from 9 o'clock to 4 o'clock at City Hall. And if you're interested, you can contact Shelley at 724-628. Two zero two zero, and she will sign you up. We'd like to have you sign up a week prior to the 18th yeah. at the latest. Well, Paul, thank you for your work with the trees here in the city. Appreciate you. your work on this project. Thank you for having me. Wish you well with the program. <clears throat> and now you're in the know.